ဒီဘုရားကြီးမှာဇီမူကြီးမှာတော့မထောက်စကိုဘူးနေစမ္မကြိမ်မြောက်မနေသူတွေခံတာခံနာစီစဉ်စတတ်ဖို့ဒီက
Hello, Ming Glava. When I'm in Vietnam, I will say Xin Chào. When I'm in Singapore, I will say Good Morning, everyone. If I'm in Malaysia, I will say Selamat Pagi. But today in Myanmar, I will say Hello, Ming Glava. First of all, I would like to take the opportunity to say thank you to Mr. Chao Tu Ong, the CEO of MIDA University, who could not be here today. Mr. Francis Lawson, the director of City of Oxford College, Dr. William, the academic director of MIDA University, Dr. Kim Tan, Seya, Seyama, everyone, don't forget also Manam, the executive committee member and all the team members who organized this wonderful graduation event this morning. And last but not least, to all graduates of City of Oxford College UK, congratulations on your special day. I will start with a quote by a famous fellow English gentleman. If somebody offers you an amazing opportunity, but you are not sure you could do it, say yes and learn how to do it later. This is a quote by Sir Richard Charles Nicholas Branson, whose net worth is 3.9 billion US dollar. He founded the Virgin Group in 1970s which controls more than 400 companies in various fields. One of the well-known successors, Virgin Atlantic Airlines and Virgin Galactic, which promotes space tourism. The world we live in today is becoming more complex and highly dynamic. At MIBA University, we ponder about, we think very hard. What are the most important, important skills and knowledge needed for us to help our graduates to achieve success in their lives tomorrow? On this special event, I would like to share with all the top three important skills you need to succeed beyond 2020 next year. These points came up top of our list gathered from the studies made globally. The number one on the list is complex problem solving skill. In the world of big data and artificial intelligence, AI. Computers are getting smarter than human beings. Humans are being replaced by machines as automobiles, cars are replaced by horses. But machines are still not too smart to take decisions and solve complex problems. Complex problem solving is the most important skill that every individual should possess. The skill naturally grows with hard work and real life experience. At MIBA University, we have embedded this into our curriculum by providing not just lecturers with academic background, but by introducing real industry people who are on the job, who are exposed in actual business world, in know of up-to-date system in the business world. Learning from these people is worth tons of gold. 
The second, second most important skill needed to succeed is creativity. Machines help get work done faster, but it cannot be creative. It's the creativity of a person inventing the machine. Companies hire employees who are creative and innovative. They want their employees to implement new ideas and think outside the box. Entrepreneurs need to be creative to be a few steps ahead of their competitors. You need to be creative in transforming data into information. Give yourself time to think and to observe things before you can improve them. Creative people revolutionize the world. The point begs us, MIDA University, to ask this question. How could we teach creativity to our students? Yes, it can be done. For example, a brainstorming activity that is done in class with the students does precisely that. Not only does brainstorming improve critical thinking skills, but it also encourages individuals to navigate different perspectives and opinions in order to come to achieve a common goal. The third most important skill is emotional intelligence. We hear this all the time. EQ, emotional caution. What is that? Emotional intelligence refers to the ability to control and manage one's own emotions and capability to influence others' emotion too. Success requires control, that is, control on one's own mind. Mastering this skill is very important to you for your own personal growth. Before influencing others' emotion, you need first to be able to control on your own emotion. Only then you can influence others and work is done together. It is a very important skill in leadership. You learn this in MIBA University through group case studies. Okay? And the learning process becomes more intense and exciting when your classmates and peers are of equal intelligence or higher. We cultivate this in MIBA University with having stringent entry requirements for students who would like to study with us. Sometimes only reasonable, smart students can study with MIBA University. You are one of the batch that is the smart one. I would probably say that we are the few or not the only university in Myanmar that rejects students who could not meet to their requirements as for us to uphold the standard of one of the best graduates in the country. Before I end my speech today, I will take the chance to quote Sir Richard Branson. There is no greater things you can do with your life than your work than to follow your passion in the way that serves the world and you. The philosophy MIBA University holds dear in our heart. Education is not the feeling of a pill, but the lighting of a fire. With this, I would like to take the opportunity again to wish all the graduates a big hearty congratulations. You deserve it. Thank you very much, Dr. Alaska, for giving you a very excellent speech.
First of all, let me say congratulations to all of you. You should feel very proud of yourselves. It's a very special day. Graduation can sometimes feel like the end of something, but actually you are at a new beginning. Your education will not stop because you leave college. We are all of us learners for the whole of our lives. And the learning does not take place in classrooms. It takes place inside your head. Education is a wonderful thing because it gives us the opportunity to succeed in the world. But it also brings with it a great responsibility. That we should leave the world a better place than we found it. Education gives us the power to make a difference. The world has never needed educated people more than it does today. 50 years ago, in July 1969, man landed on the moon for the first time. At the time it seemed that space would be the next frontier. Yet in 2019, we know that the biggest issues of our time are with our own planet. The problems of today are global issues. They are not the responsibility of one country, but all of us who are citizens of the world. Being educated means that we should know what is at stake. There is the challenge of climate change and the linked threat of air pollution. Nine out of 10 people in the world do not breathe clean air. There is still great inequality in the world. 82% of the wealth generated in 2017 went to 1% of the population. Youth unemployment is still far too high in many countries. In South Africa, 56% of young people do not have a job. We know that continued use of plastics will damage our planet. And we have to stop thinking of these things as the problems of other cultures. If 2018 taught us anything, it is that partnerships, collaboration, and international cooperation are the bedrock of global success. We must learn to make a better future together if we are really the educated people that we think we are. So we should look forward to the future but not expect it to be like the past. After all, many of today's top jobs did not exist 10 years ago. Research tells us that 85% of the jobs in 2030 have not been invented yet. They will use technologies that we cannot predict. By 2025, the world's most populous country will be India. And already, the world's largest English-speaking community is not in England or America, but in China. Success is closer now than it has ever been. But there is more competition. It is not enough to be passionate. We must also be purposeful. We are all part of an international digital community. Astonishingly, in the world today, more people have mobile phones than toilets. So what tools do you need to succeed in the modern world? It has already been said this morning 
how important it is to be a creative problem solver. It's also ever so important that you have the confidence to think differently. It's important that you have values because you will be judged by them. Be courageous and ask good questions. In the modern world there is an entrepreneurial spirit. Qualities of leadership are valued. Independence of thought is important. And creativity is certainly the skill of the future. But remember that the only person you can change is yourself. If you are holding a mobile phone, you are already linked to an international world. You now hold an international certificate, and not many people can say that. Your education is your passport, and just like a passport, you must use it to make it work for you. How do you know that you have been well educated? You know because you have been taught to think better. If you think better now than when you started your education, then you are moving in the right direction. I believe that people across the world are equally capable of success. I said to tremendous determination and passion felt by everyone at MIBA University for the power of education. There is also a feeling of optimism and positive emotion that offers a platform for success. Today, you all deserve praise. And I would like to extend that praise to the staff of your university and to your parents and to all those people who have helped you in your journey. Nobody succeeds alone, and I think that your success is also their success. I know you would want to join with me in thanking them for their exceptional commitment. I would like to offer you three pieces of advice and three stories to help you remember them. My first piece of advice is to remember that the right answer is not always the best answer. And my story is called The Seven Wonders of the World. It's the story of a group of young children who were asked to name the seven wonders of the world. And they sit down and they discuss and they come up with their lists and they get the Taj Mahal, they get the pyramids, the Great Wall of China, and one or two others. But the teacher notices that there is one student sitting alone, looking awkward. And the teacher goes and offers help. The student says, yes, it is difficult. I think I've got them, but there are so many. And the student says, I think the seven wonders of the world are to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, to love, to love. The student's answer is better than the right answer. The student has not been limited by other people's thoughts. And that is where the message lies for us. We should not be limited by the answers that other people give us. We should think for ourselves. There is often a better answer than the right answer. My second piece of advice is to remember that what you do matters far less than why you do it. My story, which is a very famous story, takes us back to the 1960s and the space race. John F. Kennedy, who was then the President of the United States of America, went to visit NASA, the space station. And he saw a janitor mopping the floor. And he said to the janitor, what is your job? What do you do here? And the janitor said to him, my job is to help to put a man on the moon. 
Because the janitor understood that it was not what he did that mattered most. He was not worth less because he cleaned the floor. He had the highest ambition of all. And he was very aware that why he did his job was what mattered most. He taught us that it is very important to collaborate at all levels in order to have real success. And my third piece of advice is to change your attitude to failure. You will hear a lot about success today, and you have all been successful. But the most successful people are those who are brave enough to risk failure. The first story you were told this morning about Richard Branson was a really good example of that because he was somebody who was brave enough to risk failure. And these people who are brave enough to risk failure use failure to drive them forward. My story is the story of a young woman called Joanne Rowling, who in 1995 wanted to publish a novel. She was a single mother living on state benefits and had no reason to expect success. She had lots of disadvantages and no advantages. And she took her book to 12 different publishers. All of them turned it down. When she got to the 13th publisher, the 13th publisher said, yes, we will publish your book, but on one condition. We do not think that boys will read it if they know that it has been written by a woman. So we must ask you to change your name. And so she became J.K. Rowling, so that it wasn't clear whether she was a man or a woman. And the first of the Harry Potter books was published. And today, 25 years later, she is one of the richest people in the world. But what is remarkable is not that she had talent to write the books. What is remarkable is that most people do not have enough belief in themselves to fail 12 times and still keep trying to come back for a 13th attempt. So what she taught us is that it is okay to fail. What matters is what you do next. All of us, if we are brave, will fail lots of times in life. But if we are brave enough, we will turn that failure into success and we will become what we deserve to be. I think that you have listened patiently to me for long enough. Like the very best friendships, I hope that the relationship between your university and mine will go on for many, many years to come. I would like to wish you every success in whatever you do across the globe in your careers, and I would also like to wish you every success in your personal lives. Your most valuable possession is time. Make the most of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for giving your very interesting